know what? I think it's time to bring this podcast back. I tried and tried and tried so hard just to bring it back. And now, you know what? I'm in the mood to do it because I'm in the mood to talk about some wrestling stuff that happened within the past week or two. So welcome, everyone, to the 7 Days Podcast. It's been about uh, how many weeks since we've done this? Um, I mean, I have tape. I have, uh, you know, audio recorded. I tried something, but I, I just didn't care to upload it. I was just focusing on Universe Mode more, but now I'm, I'm going to be uh, getting ready to put to uh, put up Monday Night Raw for uh, tomorrow on Monday night. So you know what? I'm going to do the podcast today on Sunday. Now, I want to talk about, you know, the potential WrestleMania cards, you know, Ronda Rousey, and so much more. Now... I want to talk about some matches I want I will I would want to see at WrestleMania to make things interesting. Now, to me, I want to see like as far as the women go, because Oscar won the Rumble, Nakamura won his Rumble match. So, you know, I would love to see if Oscar. I mean, normally I would I would have been like oh, Oscar should challenge you know Alexa Bliss or whoever's the women champion after. Uh, after the Elimination Chamber match, because they announced a Women's Elimination Chamber match. So I hope after that, Alexa Bliss will no longer be champ, because I'm tired of that. Because she really needs to lose the title. It's She has not defended the championship since I can remember. I think it was October, the last time she defended the title. So, what I think, Asuka should face the Raw Women's Champion at WrestleMania. Now, I know, if she fought Charlotte, that would be a bigger match. But... A part of me wants to see Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Moore. Because, think about it. Two friends. Two friends. Becky, you know. It's been over a year since Becky Lynch had a champion, or was uh, had been champion, right? It's been a long time since she had a one-on-one SmackDown Live Women's title match. And I feel like Becky Lynch and Charlotte would be a great match, a one-on-one match. I mean, we've seen them compete at the Royal Rumble or or at um at, on on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown in the past. But I feel like at WrestleMania it would be way bigger because you know Becky Lynch. Everybody loves Becky more than ever. I, I think Becky Lynch is is nearly nearly getting the same reaction as Bailey would get back in the NXT days. Nearly, but. I honestly think Be- uh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's title is the way to go. That's just me. You know what I mean? Two friends going at it. Becky Lynch looking to uh, reclaim the championship. She's the first SmackDown Women's champion, the first SmackDown Women's draft pick. You know, she, like, the, it would be great if the, if that match happened. That That's just me. You know, Charlotte being the champ. You know, she doesn't have to turn heel. You know, it just, just friends going at it. It, it. it doesn't need to be, you know, heel or babyface all the time. I think Becky and Charlotte, just, it was just good. It would just be good for me. I mean, Oscar versus Charlotte, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that's not great. I'm not saying it's shit. I'm just saying, I don't know. I just feel like I'm just in the mood for Becky and Charlotte to go at it. That, that's all. I, I've been kind, I kind of been waiting for that for a while. Um... So, Asuka versus uh, Charlotte. If that happens, well, I mean, obviously, Asuka will have to go to SmackDown Live, which, uh, if, if that happens, then that's a good thing, because Asuka would then be drafted over. They will have to do a freaking draft, because we can't have the rosters how it is in WWE, you know? I'm pretty sure Randy Orton is eventually going to do what John Cena did, you know, free agent and be on Raw or SmackDown and just take months off, you know? I, I don't know. But, yeah. I honestly feel like if Oscar wins the championship, which well, she will, because they're not going to be stupid and let, not let her be undefeated. I think she, they're going to let her be champion for a long time, and then they're going to build somebody up, and then boom, they're going to lose the championship. I mean, I would accept if someone like cheated to beat her, you know, like they had to use this or use that to beat her. It's like ah, fuck you, you, you had to cheat to get the win. You know what I mean? So I like. Ah, so yeah, if Oscar wins the, te- the championship, then that means that we're going to have a draft. They have to have a draft or a superstar shakeup, whatever they call it. And and then we have we have different people on, on different shows, you know. I'm tired. I, I, I'm just, I, I don't know. I think, I, I always have that feeling, oh, you know, oh, 
they're on a different show, you know, they're going to be a book better. They're going to do this, they're do that. I mean, look at, look at Sami Zayn. Um, it took Sami Zayn until October for Sami Zayn's entire WWE career to change. When he came over to SmackDown, he was doing the exact same thing he did on Raw. Nothing of importance. This dude, they were about to feed him with him and Kevin Owens again. But then they went with AJ Styles instead. And Sami Zayn feuded with Baron Corbin, I think. And then he feuded with Mike Kanellis for no reason. And then that's it. And then he, he, he aligned himself with KO and the rest is history. You know? So... I honestly feel like just because somebody goes from one show to the other doesn't mean they're going to change. I I would I would wish that would happen, but it's not the case. I mean, there's some people that change and they just don't do anything, you know? But as far as some um, WrestleMania, I mean, Miz versus Braun Strowman for the IC title. Nah, I'm not really feeling that match. I would accept. I mean, I know everyone else says this, but it's true. I will take Balor over Miz, uh, Balor over Braun, rather, to face the Miz for the Intercontinental title. Mainly because, I mean, maybe they could they could build off something, you know. They, they, they could start off with, like, who is the better, who has the better faction, who is the dominant faction. You know, obviously people might say, people are going to say Miz and the Miz to Raj because, you know, they went up against the likes of the Shield and all these guys, right? And uh, the Battle Club, they just came through, like, literally, like, two months ago. So, y you know, it's, like, it's not really a threat. They're not really a threat yet. They only beaten the Revival and, and Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. That's it. The Battle Club hasn't done much since they came through and on WWE television. So, they could start off with there. And then, you know, then Balor and Miz would be like, like Miz would brag how he's the Intercontinental Champion. And then Balor would be like, oh, how about me and you face each other at WrestleMania or something like that. Or maybe, or, or, or either that, either that, or Miz faces Balor on Raw. Because Miz, I heard he's going to be gone for a little bit. Because, you know, I, I, I also heard that Maurice, the, 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 the baby is due, I think, the week of WrestleMania. So, obviously, the Miz is going to have to miss WrestleMania, which not really going to hurt him. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, he worked so hard. And then to, to know that he's not going to be on the show, I mean, I might be wrong. He might be there. We don't know. You know, anything can happen. Maybe... Maybe uh, he's off TV for a little bit, but then he shows up at WrestleMania at the last second. Look at the Hardys. They were freaking doing Ring of Honor ladder matches with the Young Bucks 24 hours before they came through to WWE and went to WrestleMania and competed in that ladder match. Miz can do almost something like that, where like he's gone for TV. We don't know if he's going to be there or not. And then after that, he could be with Maurice for like half of the day. And then when it gets to WrestleMania time, boom. You know, they, they could just drive him all the way into the arena and then, he, you know, him him will go up against his opponent and boom. Like, something like that. We don't know what happens, you know. Just because something is reported on the internet doesn't mean it's true. So, I heard that that's going to happen. So, maybe. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. But, yeah, I'll take Biffin Battle versus Miz versus uh, over Braun versus Miz because Braun Strowman versus Miz. I mean that didn't Braun got revenge when he beat up Miz uh, when he put him in the garbage truck back at in uh, October. Didn't Braun got revenge? He beat up Curtis Axel. Axel had a freaking neck brace for like how many weeks until he was able to take it off? You know, so Braun got revenge on Miz. There was no point of feuding with the Miz. No point of that. I mean, I would rather have Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar. And then Braun Strowman wins and Brock puts over Braun because Braun is the young guy who needs to be, you know, put over to go to the next level and go into the main event spot. Because Roman Reigns, been there, done that. I understand that he almost beat, he, he could have beat Brock because he had Brock down, but then Brock hit him on an F5 and then Rollins came through with the cash in and all that stuff. You know, like, Roman could have beat Brock, but Miz, Seth Rollins got involved and screwed it up. I understand that. I mean, they could ha I would rather have Brock, Brock versus Roman at SummerSlam. You know what I mean? Or somewhere else. Not now. Just not now. You know, I... I, I 
like, it's like, it's like, yeah, I know, I know. Like a couple of days ago or weeks ago, I'm like, ah, it's gonna be Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble. You know, he's gonna go face uh, Brock Lesnar and shit. So, and then I kept saying maybe he's gonna win the Elimination Chamber. I'm just saying I don't want to see it. But if it means to get this shit out of the way, if Brock Lesnar's gonna leave after this, I honestly don't care. Just give him a Legends contract so he could be in the video game, and boom, we're good. Simple as that. I don't care that if Brock Lesnar's on TV or not, because I barely see the fucker for the entire for the majority of the year. You know, when Brock comes, he's like, "Hey, yeah, it's like cool." No pyro on his entrance makes his entrance less meaningful. So, you know, like Brock Lesnar to me, it's like he's not on TV. I don't really look at him as a special occasion anymore. I, I just look at him as, oh, shit, this guy still works here. Oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? It's like when a current star who's off TV, you know what I mean, comes on TV for the first time in how long? Like, Ty Dillinger. I have not seen Ty Dillinger in so long. And then when he had the SmackDown tournament, boom, he's on TV fighting against Mahal or whoever in the tournament. So, I could care less if Brock Lesnar leaves WWE after this, you know? 2015, I didn't feel the same way. I was like, ah, maybe he should sign and stay. You know, maybe he might go to UFC. If he goes to UFC, that's cool, whatever. But, like, I don't want him to go at the time. But now, I could care fucking less. All right? We got a brand split. We got a lot of good talent. We don't need Brock on TV anymore. We don't need Brock in WWE that much. Brock is barely there. Why pay him so much money? I'm sure Brock Lesnar is the reason why we don't have fucking Pyro. And, yeah... I'm making it a big deal about Pyro. I love me my Pyro, okay? I love Pyro Technics, okay? I do. I hate watching Raw. I hate watching SmackDown. I fucking hate watching a big pay-per-view like the Royal Rumble, like Survivor Series, like SummerSlam with no Pyro. I hate it. I hate it a lot. Big events. No Pyro? I didn't hear some people saying, oh... They don't need Pyro. Pyro's not needed. Are you serious? What do you need to bring excitement to the show to begin the show? What do you need? You need Pyro. You need Pyro to be excited. You can't tell me you're going to hear loud shit go off and you're going to sit there being like tired and, and just not interested. Are you serious? No. Saying that Pyro's not needed. Then what the fuck? Why do people buy firecrackers and let them shits up on 4th of July or Canada Day or whatever on a special day? Well, Pyro doesn't matter. Fuck out of here. Pyro brings excitement. Without Pyro, like, like, Bro like the Brock Lesnar's entrance, AJ Styles' entrance, Kane's entrance. So boring without Pyro. I'm sorry. I love Styles' entrance. I do, you see me mock it every time, every time I do a reaction, I always do, I do it off fucking camera, but I do not like the fact that there's no pyro, I'm sorry, Brock Lesnar, same shit, whenever he raises his arm up and he brings it down, no pyro, it's like, why, and Kane, sound effects? Sa Kane was the first guy, by the way, for WWE to use sound effects to uh, cover up the pyro. Sound effects. Are you serious? I understand when The Undertaker makes his entrance, they have to use sound effects to make his entrance more scary shit. But Kane? With the py with no pyro sound effects. You know what I mean? So it's like... I don't care if Brock is there or not. Just don't care anymore. You know, just give him a Legends deal. Just, just give him a contract where he could be in the video game. That's it. You know what I mean? So, that, that's all I can say about that. You know, let him in the Hall of Fame one day. Just let him go on good terms. And hope you do well with your future endeavors. You know, you're not going to be wrestling anywhere else anyway. You think you're going to be doing Suplex City in Japan? Fuck no. You think you're going to be doing just Suplex City in, in uh, other places? Nah. Nope. So I, I, so, I don't care if Brock leaves. So, that's why I want Braun to be the one to win the chamber and go face Brock at Mania. Beat him... To where he could win the championship. I would not fucking care. If Roman Reigns. Is the next guy. Is the first guy to face Braun. For the championship. After Wrestlemania. The first pay per view. I think it's Backlash for Raw. Uh, Braun and Roman. Main events that show. First of all it would be the first pay per view. 
that's not uh, a big pay per view where Brock had to the where uh, where the Universal Title will be on the line since Fastlane. Or, or, no, not Fastlane. Uh, I think Great Balls of Fire. Great Balls of Fire is the last exclusive non-big pay-per-view where the Universal title would, uh, was last defended. Was last up for grabs. And it has never been on the line uh, that's outside of a big pay-per-view since then. And Backlash would be the first one to do so. If Braun is able to beat Brock at Mania and he faces whoever... The one whoever wants to step up and face uh, Braun Strowman, you know what I mean. Um, but there's also another there's also another rumor about Braun Strowman that he will be the guy to team up with Ronda Rousey because Ronda Rousey will be in a tag match with Stephanie McMahon against Triple H, and uh, y- y- yeah, uh, teaming up with Stephanie in Triple H against Ronda Rousey and Braun Strowman because obviously. If you smell, The Rock ain't gonna be there. Because, Hollywood reasons, he cannot wrestle. I mean, The Rock doesn't need to wrestle. Obviously, he does not need to wrestle. I'm pretty sure he would love to wrestle. But due to his obligations in Hollywood, not gonna let him happen. Even though he's in a great... He's in, his, he's in, a, he's in a great shape in The Rock. He's in a great shape. You know, he's active, obviously, because he's doing movies and a lot of action movies. So, most likely, he's gonna be in shape. You know, and plus The Rock's... The Rock's moveset is not really, like, in awe. You know what I mean? It's just that if, just that if The Rock does the people's elbow, it's all it's all nostalgia. Because everybody know, like, everybody everybody who, like, have seen The Rock come from, like, you know, nation domination and then being the people's champion and then being the corporate champion and so on and so on. So, just seeing The Rock... You know, wrestling in the ring, a full match, not that bullshit at WrestleMania 32 with Eric Rowan, okay? I mean, yeah, it's cool for Eric Rowan to be like, I wrestled The Rock for like six seconds at WrestleMania. Yep, in front of 100,000 people. Yep, no, 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 no. A full match, I know The Rock can do it. The Rock, better shape than me, I can tell you that. So, you know, but do the obligation to won't be able to make it, so... Rod Strowman, I mean, yeah, I, I, I understand it, you know, it, you know, Triple H, you know, you try to fuck with Braun Strowman, playing, trying to play with Braun Strowman's emotions back at Survivor Series, Braun Strowman did some damage towards Triple H, next on on Raw, Stephanie McMahon was bragging how Triple H isn't scared of anybody, and then Braun Strowman came through, this bitch walked away like a pussy, yeah, I said it, and then pretty much it, so... I would understand that. I'm not gonna be mad at it. I, I'm actually, I, I'm actually interested to see to see how how everything would be played out. You know, is Braun and Triple H gonna do all the work, or Stephen McMahon and Ronda Rousey gonna do something? Like, oh, what's gonna happen there? You know what I mean? So, and uh, there's also some news that Jason Jordan is what or he was originally set to be in the chamber match, but since he has an injury. It's in doubt where he might not be in the match because he's because of an injury. He, he suffered a spine injury. That's why at the Royal Rumble he barely was at. He was barely active. He didn't do anything actually. His face hit the post and he was out for like the the entirety of the match. He tagged himself in. Realized how fucked up he is. He tagged Rollins back in the match and then the bar won the title. So yeah, Jason George was supposed to be in the elimination chamber match. But obviously, he's fucked up, so we don't know how well Jason Jordan... I, I, what I hope, I actually hope, you know what I, you know what I want? Is Dean Ambrose able to come back now, or is he still, like, rehabbing and shit? Because I, 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 don't, I don't know. I honestly hope Dean Ambrose is able to come back by now. I mean, he got hurt, what, December? He got hurt December, right? So, like, over a month ago? So hopefully, if Ambrose is capable, he could like return. Uh, you know, win a qualifying match. Does not have to wrestle until the Elimination Chamber pay per view. You know, he wrestles then. You know, if you want to take him out early, take him out early. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Something or build between Rollins and Ambrose. You know, like Rollins and Ambrose, they're like they're you know freaking they're they're back together again, and then maybe Rollins pinned Dean Ambrose. And, you know, Ambrose was like, what the fuck was that, bro? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. But yeah, Jason Jordan's supposed to be in the match. I actually expected that to happen, where Jordan would be involved in the Elimination Chamber. But, due to injury, it might not happen. 
Bobby Lashley expected to return to WWE at any time per the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, a.k.a. Delve Meltzer. Now, uh, I kind of want to see Bobby Lashley return. I do. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay? Bobby Lashley. He, in TNA, his best run in TNA, to me, was 2014. When he won the World Heavyweight Championship, I believe from from EY and Eric Young. And then he had MVP in his corner with Kenny King. And they dominated the for the rest of the year. and Or the, at least for like the majority of it in 2014. He feuded with Bobby Roode and Kurt Angle and all this. You know, Bobby, uh, uh, Bobby Lashley, I mean, he's cool. he's good in the ring. Obviously, when he speaks, it's kind of it's kind of difficult to understand what he's saying. It's kind of like with Nakamura, but at least when Nakamura does it, he has expressions on his face where I'm gonna laugh. You know, it's I find it funny, you know. But but Bobby Lashley, it's like obviously when he speaks, it's like oh, you know what I mean. So yeah, Bobby Lashley's best run in TNA 2014, and uh, the wor- I think it what was it 2016. Was it 2016 or 2017 where Bobby Lashley held every championship? I think it was 2016 when he had the X Division, the the uh, Television Champion or the King of the Mountain Championship rather, and the World Title. You know, like around there. I think from 2014 to 2016, that was Bobby Lashley's best run in TNA. Bobby Lashley in WWE. All I, all I remember Bobby Lashley was beating uh, Umaga at WrestleMania 23. And able to shave Vince McMahon's head bald, okay? Uh, that and winning the ECW Championship in the worst pay-per-view of all time in this, in December to dismember. In the Elimination Chamber match, Extreme Elimination Chamber match, which I actually wish that one day they bring that back, you know? Or they add that in the fucking video game. Extreme Elimination Chamber, think about that. Weapons inside the Chamber match, think about that for a second. I would love to see that again one day. Obviously, it's not going to happen nowadays, but yeah. Yeah, uh, won the title then. Uh, former United States champion, I believe he beat JBL uh, on SmackDown, and then later on JBL fought Rey Mysterio in an I Quit match, and he lost. So, but yeah, Lashley hasn't done much. He's won a co- he won a couple of championships in WWE, able to do some good things. But in the end, dude, I don't know. What, I don't know what's Bobby Lashley gonna do now in WWE. WWE, if he uh, like. He, what brand is he going to be on Raw or SmackDown? He's not big enough to be on Raw to me. I think SmackDown would do, do him good. He would have matches with the likes of Benjamin and AJ Styles. AJ Styles. Shinsuke Nakamura. You know, all these guys. You know what I mean? Like, Bobby Lashley being on different shows or on SmackDown Live, you know, having great matches with these guys, you know, it, it sounds good to me. I mean, him being on Raw, I mean... Roman Reigns and Lashley, Rollins and Lashley, Jordan and Lashley, you know, like, it's like, eh. I feel like on SmackDown might be better. I don't know. But I'm not really too excited if Lashley comes back to WWE. I'll be like, oh, shit. But, like, after that's going to wear off and be like, uh, you know, whatever. And, like, when AJ Styles came to WWE 2016, I fucking, for the entire year, I enjoyed whatever AJ Styles did. 2016, I think AJ Styles had the best first year in WWE. I don't think anyone else can match what AJ Styles did. I may be, I might be wrong, but AJ Styles had one of the best, if not the best first year in WWE in ever. You know, dude came in a WWE Championship Royal Rumble match uh, in 2016. Fought Chris Jericho, beat him at Fastlane, you know, had great matches with Jericho on SmackDown, Raw, and Fastlane, you know what I mean? Uh, competed at WrestleMania, he may have lost, but still, seeing Styles on a grand stage as WrestleMania, can't get better than that. Fought Roman Reigns in great WWE Championship matches, went on to fight John Cena for the majority of the summer, and then went on to win the WWE title after the brand split. And need I say more? You know, held the title for the rest of the year. I mean, yeah, he had things with James Ellsworth, more like a comedy type of thing. But still, AJ Styles had a better year. Uh, 
then at least in 2017, he had the war. He had a bad year in 2017. Lost to Cena in a fantastic match at the Royal Rumble. Then he lost at the Elimination Chamber. He beat Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. He had a feud with Shane McMahon. Uh, he tried to get back the championship. Then he turned face. Uh, but then he feuded with Kevin Owens for the United States title, which was a long-ass freaking feud. That was actually a bad feud to me. Uh, I, I can't remember what great match they had. I think the one at SummerSlam, maybe. But then had Shane McMahon involved. And then he went on to feud with, I don't know, Baron Corbin for a little bit for the U.S. title. Lost the U.S. title. Then he finally regains the WWE Championship against Mahal. And then had a great match with Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. And it had a rematch with Mahal at Clash of Champions. And that. And then get involved with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. That is it. So, yeah. Bad year for AJ Styles. I, but, yeah. Lastly, returning to WWE. Not really hype. But it's okay. I'll be okay with this year. And uh, something else. A lack of success for the couple of 205 Live house shows last month. No freaking shit. That is no success for 205 Live. I'm not dissing the guys on the roster in the 205 Live roster. But you're not over enough to have your own house shows. The women are not over enough to have their own house shows. But yeah, they're not, they're not stupid enough to have their own house shows. Damn. 205 Live, why? I, I I understand taking a risk. Do something different. I, I understand that. But what is the point? They're not over yet. 205 Live is boring. It's like, it's just, it's just boring to me. It's like, the crowd, and it, that's the thing. The crowd makes it worse. Why do you think people love NXT so much? Because the crowd makes the show. The show has good stuff already, but the crowd makes it better. Without the crowd, the show ain't shit. Remember, it's a 50-50 thing. 50% is the wrestling and the wrestlers and the and the personalities and all that. But the other half is the crowd. You, without that half, this half, one half, which is the, the wrestling. Without the, without, without the half of the crowd, it ain't shit. You need... You need great crowd. And the fact that they keep taping 205 Live after a two-hour show in Smack the Live, in, which, has been a, uh, which has been bad over the past year, okay? Smack the Live is bad enough. And then they had to add 205 Live. Three hours, six hours, six hours between Raw, Smack Down 205 Live alone, okay? They need to drop that. No, no, if they don't, don't want to drop it, I mean... 205 Live is just a show. It's just a show. I mean, why is main event... Why why is main event, you know, going on? I I don't get it. Now, I'm going to talk about Dolph Ziggler, okay? Dolph Ziggler, to me, I have no idea why WWE wasted Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler, okay? The dude came, won the U.S. title at Clash of Champions, added to a match he had no business being part of. I'm still sticking with that. He had nothing to do with the match. He had nothing to do with, uh, like, with the whole story between Corbin and Rude, right? They added Ziggler for what? I don't know. But the match was good. I think it opened the show. The match was good. And then they made Ziggler win. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, let's see where this goes now. Because... It's not that hard, or at least to me. For some, they may be stubborn or they just won't let go of the past. But to me, I'm always hoping maybe that one big win is able and good enough for you to advance yourself later on in WWE. So I'm thinking if Ziggler wins, okay, maybe it might give him a shot in the arm of adrenaline that he needs to move forward in his career and actually do something, right? And what happens? He drops the title on SmackDown. And then it's like, are we, is he going to pull uh, Michaels for his Razor Ramon type shit when he returns? And then 
people, and then you know, people were saying maybe Dolph Ziggler could be the one to win the Royal Rumble. Some obviously would be against it because they want Nakamura to win it. But still, what if Dolph Ziggler was the one where he came out number thirty, which he did, could have won the match. Now, first of all, Dolph Ziggler coming back. Uh, I didn't like how he came back, by the way. First of all, the record scratch, that wasn't necessary. They could have just played the fucking... They played the music anyway. The point of the record scratcher is where they play the music and then they cut it off within like five seconds of the song. And they should have just played the music. Dolph should have came out hyped and just... And like tried to eliminate a lot of people and do damage and then last until he's like in the final three, final two. I would, I wouldn't mind if you lost, okay? But at least do it in a way where he would actually be, where people would be like, "Oh shit, he almost he could have won the rumble there." You know what I mean? But what did he do? He come in, he super kicks people, still doing, doing the, still doing the stupid, the band tuning up the band garbage, and then he gets eliminated by who? Finn Balor? I, I mean, ah, I don't, I just don't even know. Now I know why Pulse hate him so much. I it, it just Dolph needs to drop so much stuff in his character. It's not even funny. The theme song I would keep. The graphics gotta change. His look, get a haircut. Like don't cut it like short, short. I mean like just cut it how he had the haircut in 2014, 2013, around there. Um also, like, get new gear. Wear, I, I wear trunks, not tights, not Shawn Michaels esque type of thing. Like, just, just drop it, dude. Like, you're not Shawn Michaels. Stop. If I want to see Shawn, I'm going on the fucking network and I watch Shawn Michaels all damn day of my life. I don't need to see someone else ripping off the HBK, but try to add his stuff along with it. I don't need that. Dolph Ziggler needs to change, man. Like, that's why in my universe mode, I changed Ziggler's moveset. I would normally would have kept the tuning up the band, switching music for, uh, for his second finisher beside the zigzag. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to give him the sleeper hold instead. The sleeper hold is his, is his finisher now. I don't... I'll take the super kick where he just does it out of nowhere and just hits you right in the face. I don't need to see... Tuning up the fucking band for him to hit the super kick. I don't need to see that. You know, he hit the super kick just like the Young Bucks do. Out of nowhere. Quick and fast. So, but yeah, Dolph came and just wasted everybody's time and just so underwhelming. And then nothing happened since. It's been about, it's, it's, it's about to be two weeks since the Royal Rumble. And we haven't heard shit. Just saying. It's about to be two weeks since we uh, since the rumble, and we, we ever heard nothing. Deadly squat. So I'm just hoping something for Dolph, something good. I don't know what. There could be a rumor. There's a rumor going on that, that Ronda Rousey would have Paul Heyman as her uh, advocate. No problem with that. No problem with that. Is she, I mean, is she, can she talk properly? I mean, I think she can, but maybe, like, people won't really pay attention to what she has to say, like, from her personally. So maybe if they, if she, if she had Paul Heyman at her side, maybe people would take her way more seriously. It's like, whoa, I thought Brock Lesnar was supposed to be the only person to have Paul Heyman as their advocate. Look at Ronda Rousey got Paul Heyman as her advocate, you know what I mean? So... I I don't even know. I'm trying to look at other things to see what's going on. I'm, uh, Eric Bischoff shooting down rumors of uh, Ronda Rousey. Or, or Don Ronda Rousey, Jesus. The Undertaker. Undertaker uh, shoots down rumors. Even had talks with WCW. Why people are talking about this? No. Undertaker was in WCW as uh, Mean Mark Calloway or some shit. Uh, and back in the 1990, 1989, around there. And then, obviously, that didn't work out well. So, boom. He came through. 
He came over, and he's the greatest of all time in The Undertaker. So, we're... Oh, there's taping spoilers. I'm probably going to forget it anyway. Fuck it. So, if you if you made it this far in this podcast, I'm going to read you guys NXT TakeOver, New Orleans, Matt Card, and Rumors. You got to just skip ahead, or you can just listen. I'm letting you know. There's some spoiler shit, all right? Even I wouldn't do this, but... I'm in the mood to do it now, so why not? So, NXT held unprecedented two straight nights of tapings in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, this past week, February 1st and 2nd. And then they moved... Uh, oh, and and such moved us a lot of the way toward NXT's next WWE Network special takeover in New Orleans. There's one more taping back at... The yellow, black and yellow brand, usual full cell live home base before WrestleMania 34, but the bulk, uh, but the bulk of the card for Saturday, April 7th at the Smoothie King Center already looks set. Here's the match card based on Thursday and Friday spoilers. Um, we got Alistair Black versus Cian Amis for the NXT Championship. We have the Dusty Rhodes Classic coming back. Uh, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Uh, featuring TM61, Heavy Machinery, Tebow, Tino Sabatelli, and Riddick Moss. Or the... Yeah. Uh, Altos of Pain, Street Profits, and Sanity. Uh, Amber Moon, Shayna Baszler for the Women's Championship again. That time, obviously, is going to be Shayna Baszler winning the title. Hope to God this happens. Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano after what happened at TakeOver... Uh, uh, f- Philadelphia, where, uh, Tommaso freaking, you know, attacked, uh, Johnny Gargano after losing that five-star classic, and hopefully, you know, hopefully we see, you know, EC3 and all these other guys being a part of TakeOver. So, those are the rumors so far about NXT TakeOver, but I'm going to read y'all some WrestleMania rumors. WrestleMania 34 matches, 2018, card, rumors, date, location, prediction, shit. You better not play no... Why are you playing a video? For fuck's sake. Why? Come on. Alright. So. Don't need to see that. Okay. WrestleMania 34 matches, that's already confirmed. It's AJ versus Nakamura, obviously. So, here here are the predictions for the WrestleMania card, okay, based on current storylines. Brock versus Roman, obviously, we've been talking about this since last year's March. Nearly 11 months ago, we've been talking about this. Taker versus Cena, you know, that, you know, that could happen. Uh... It looked like it looked like WrestleMania 33 was Taker's retirement, but he is apparently way healthier this year, following a much needed and delayed hip hip surgery. His confusing promo at Raw 25, notwithstanding, many seem to believe Taker is ready to go for another payday. And Cena makes the most sense by far, but of any potential opponent, it would be a huge addition to the card. I want to see it. But at the same time, we don't need to see it. You know what I mean? It's one of those. Charlotte versus Rousey or Asuka for the SmackDown Women's title. Uh, Alexa Bliss versus Asuka or Nia. Okay. Uh, Braun versus Miz. Mm, don't want that. Ronda Rousey and to be determined against McMahon and Triple H. Rollins versus Balor or Samoa Joe. Why? Why would, why would we want to see that? I don't want to see... I don't want to see Rollins versus Balor. Uh, or Rollins versus uh, Joe again. I don't want to see this. Why? I don't want to see that. Fuck that. Mm-mm. No. No, 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 no. Don't want to see that. Optus of Pain versus the Usos? Nah. It's got to be Rusev Day versus Usos. And... The Bar versus whoever for the tag team titles, maybe Anderson and Gallows. Don't fucking tell me they're gonna do a smack uh, a women's battle royale. We don't need that. That's something I have to put my foot down and say, no, we don't need fucking more shit. We don't need that right now. We don't need a women's battle royale for what? 
for who? Uh, 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 fabulous Moolah Barriel. Like, uh, I we don't we don't need this. We already have one. That's bad enough. We don't need another one. For God's sakes. So I'm gonna tell you what I want to see. You know, like Braun versus Brock, Taker versus Cena, Charlotte versus Becky. Bliss or whoever the Raw Women's Champion after Elimination Chamber versus Oscar, Miz versus Balor, uh, Rousey versus uh, Rousey and whoever the fuck I don't care. Uh, Rollins versus mm, I think Dean gotta make Dean turn. Dean's gotta turn heel. Pronto, uh huh. And the Usos versus Rusev Day. The Bar I don't give a fuck if they're not on the card. Uh, Smack the Live tag team titles went on the line last year. So I'll let Raw take a year off. Fuck it. I don't care. Let Raw tag team titles be off the show. They don't need to be on WrestleMania card. For what? What tag teams do they have on Raw? The Revival? No. Uh, uh, Anderson and Gallows? No. We don't need to see that. They're not, they're not good enough yet. I'm sorry. So yeah. That, those are the WrestleMania, and, put, and I heard, fucking hell, I heard, oh, support, uh, WrestleTalk. support Wrestle Talk, yeah, I heard that WrestleMania 35, it's, it's, it's actually confirmed, WrestleMania 35 is in New Jersey, again, are you serious, again? Do we need that? Again? Huh? That's the same place twice in a lifetime. Remember that? We don't need... We don't need this. Come on. Why? Why in MetLife Stadium? Why can it not come to Toronto? I'm wait WrestleMania 36 has to be. Has to be. Okay? We have a Rogers Center. That's good enough. Okay, it's not like we have the Air Canada Center alone. We have the Rogers Center. That's good enough. Sheesh. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Seven days podcast. Nothing much. So look up, look, uh, tune in to Monday Night Raw tomorrow. Universe mode. So I'm just going to chill, watch some videos, and record Monday Night Raw, and I'll be on my way. And I'm out, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Like, subscribe. Oh, Lord. Wow. Later.